Welcome back. In its second knowledge series event for 2012, the Dubai International Financial Centre discussed different specialist world-class resolution platforms today that are available in Dubai for commercial disputes. The initiative by the DIFC to create dialogue between industry experts and DIFC members introduced each of the DIFC's commercial dispute resolution options and discussed why and how firms might access them. In their discussions, the panelists stressed the importance of having dispute settlement options that are as sophisticated as the businesses they serve. The DIFC has its own set of civil and commercial laws and regulations and has developed a complete code of law governing financial services regulation. Dubai Gold and Commodities Exchange registered nearly 560,000 contracts in April, valued at 22 billion US dollars, a 146% growth from the month of April last year. The contracts are the highest ever monthly volumes recorded by the exchange, and on April 25th, the GCX passed the 2 million contracts mark. Year to year volumes on the exchange at the end of April reached 2,105,680 contracts valued at $86.5 billion, a 131% rise from 2011. Average daily volumes in April increased 146% year-on-year to reach 27,989 contracts. Additionally, 15,582 contracts for copper futures were traded in their first seven days of trading. Air Arabia, the Middle East's biggest budget carrier, announced a 12% rise in first quarter profits. Net income for the period jumped 47 million dirhams, up from 42.7 million the previous year, while revenue rose to 621.9 million dirhams from 513.2 million. And Shua Capital saw revenues at 55 million dirhams for the quarter, up from 27.1 million in Q1 2011. So with that, let's now look at the stock indices across the GCC. has opened the trading week on the back foot as the new political developments out of Europe are leading to uncertainty and have risk sentiments squarely on the back foot. Well, to talk more about this, we are now joined by Gaurav Kashyap, the head of DGCX desk at Alpari Middle East. Welcome to the program. Glad to be here, Mona. So the political picture is uncertain and ever evolving. What can we expect from the Euro common currency in the week ahead? Well, Mirna, because of the changing uh, political landscape of Europe, we expect uh, the euro common currency to remain under pressure in trading this week. Uh, furthermore, we expect safe haven assets like the US dollar and Japanese yen to remain well propped up because of all the uncertainty coming out of Europe. And once again, obviously, gold will also remain well bought uh, during these times of uh, political uncertainty. Now, we're approaching a very, very curious situation in Greece. Uh, the majority coalition between the POSAC and the new democracy they were the ones who actually negotiated the bailout, uh, both bailouts from the EU and the IMF. And all of a sudden, after Sunday's elections, they are no longer holding the majority. They've yielded it to several smaller individual parties who are very, very anti-austerity measures. So this will definitely throw a spanner into the, the workings of the Eurozone. It will re-bring Greece into the forefront of the, of the economic commentators' minds with regards of can they continue to remain in the Eurozone and will the IMF be able to allow them to release additional bailout funds for a country which is already facing several, several deep austerity measures. Now, the key event on the economic calendar this week is the Bank of England's rate decision. What can we expect there? Well, Mirna, Thursday's Bank, uh, Bank of England's rate decision expected to unyield any new surprises. We're expecting to see the rate at 0.5% with no changes to their asset purchase target. Uh, now, a lot of economic uh, commentators are stating that there could be up to £25 billion of additional easing in the UK or maybe even £50 billion, but we don't foresee this as a possibility because of, A, we have a lot of higher inflation in, in the UK, and uh, very frankly, the previous meeting showed that the MPC has voted 8 to 1 from a previous 7 to 1 with regards to additional easing measures. So we don't expect to see any more changes, which is why we're very bullish on the GBP this week with re respect to the euro. So basically, if we're looking at uh, selling opportunities, the euro GBP probably looks to be the best uh, to move further on the downside.